Okay, we're back to this channel again. It's been a long time since I've made a video for um, this channel. Uh, I've just sort of uh, become preoccupied with other things, and so I haven't really got. Um, basically, I've been doing too much computer coding, and I, when I'm concentrating on coding and stuff, I just haven't been able to focus. Every so doing this kind of stuff requires more preparation than I'm prepared for, and it's just, it just hasn't worked. But I'm hoping to get back into it. Uh, today we're going to do something very strange, very simple, and very pointless, um, but why not? Uh, so basically, anyway, uh, I'm supposed to be building a costume for a costume party, uh, and I was going to do, I think his name's Marvin, the, the robot from um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I was going to make a really terrible cardboard box one. And I've got this little thing I've been, ma I've been making up here, which is, it's going to be, it says meh, because she's depressed all the time. <laughs> I thought it would be funny. Uh, so this is going to go M-E, it's going to be uh, hooked up to a, um, a 4017 and just basically cycling through like a nice little pattern where it goes M, the M turns on, the E turns on, the H turns on, and then it's all on for a while. And then the M turns off and the E turns off and then the H turns off and it goes blank briefly and back on again. Um, but I also kind of wanted, though I'm probably not going to get it done in time for tomorrow, but I wanted to have like some kind of robot -y, like this is supposed to go on the front of the of the robot's chest thing so that's like oh, like on your, uh, uh, like, a, like a name badge. Um, but I also thought, like, you're going to make a costume. You've got to have, like, some sort of robotic light flashing thing. I could just throw... I'll probably just throw in some little LEDs that flash or something. But it would be nice if it was counting in binary. Um, and I didn't put any effort because everything is... I'm not very organized, so everything is all over the show. So I didn't... But I did have a box of um, ICs, and I found this in there, which has got, in this case here, 74HCTs93. Um, sorry, I just had the, feet, the, the fan heater on because it's a bit cold, but now it's too hot, so I'm turning the fan heater off. Uh, this desk is a complete mess. Sorry about this. Uh, so anyway, what is a 7493, and how does it help me with my robotic binary counting uh, robot costume ideas? Well, it turns out to be a binary divided by six um, counter. Is this actually going to be what I want it to be? I think it's going to work. I don't think it is. Uh, ripple count. Well, let's just see what it does. So I have never used this, and I thought, well, this is the only thing I've got. Um, for basics, blah, 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 uh, in the up direction. All right, I think, I, I keep thinking this was actually a double one, uh, but it's only a single one. So it's not the best choice, because I really would have just rather had a straight CMOS one. So I think the HET ones are like the TTL series, but with CMOS but with TTL levels. So it's just funny because even, even all these ones, so the, my point is is that my, my circuit for this thing here is going to be running off a 9 volt battery and I had to do that because I couldn't be bothered putting all of these LEDs in series. So they're in little groups that are in parallel of mainly three LEDs but occasionally there's four which just works with 9 volts uh, going through it. It doesn't work with a slightly flat um, uh, nine volt battery uh, here. Which this one here is, is, is getting a bit flat, but it actually lights up three LEDs fine, but it doesn't light up four, so it doesn't always work. But that's the point. As I had to use a nine volt battery just because it was like, how else are you going to do that? Like, I mean, the ultimate thing would, of course, would be to run it off like 30 volts or something, um, and then you could just do all of these in series, and you wouldn't have to worry about like having uh, resistors everywhere uh, but I still have to get like there's quite a few resistors here so <laughs> it wasn't you know that, that wasn't that great but the point is so I'm going to have to go uh, I've do some voltage regulating because these things are only going to take f five volts um, so if they'd been the CMOS version I would have just run everything off the nine volt batteries and hoped um, that they would all be relatively okay with that and throwing them some some capacitors here and there to keep things going but it looks like I'm going to have to be a bit smarter. But anyway, if I actually get around to doing this. But we're going to be using this thing here. So we've got our voltage regulator all ready to go. Uh, how do I open this thing without... Um, I haven't actually... I don't think I've ever opened one of these with a little 
with an actual stopper on the end. So I'm not too sure what uh, these do. These are these these are smart stoppers. These make things much easier than um, than having a piece of sellotape over the end, which when you try to put back on doesn't work, and they all fall out again. So. Um, this is kind of working. Like I can, I can see the future where this will actually come out, and I will be feeling good. All right, there we go. It's out. We we'll take out one, and then one for good luck. That's how I always go um, when I'm rolling with um, ICs, and that can go back in there. We're fine. So let's just put one on this side of the board because I don't know where the I don't know where the chip the chip squeezy tool is, but that's okay. It's fine. So what we're going to do is try to suss out the two different clocks and if it actually does what I think it does. I'm pretty sure it does. You've got Q1, Q2, Q4, Q8. So all we're going to do is we're just going to use one of these silly um, 555 timer, timer chip things. So I had another one. There's no point opening up another box if you've got one sitting around on the table somewhere. Uh, though in the, my final circuit, I'm actually going to use a real 555. I might have to have like three 555s, but then only two 55s because I kept thinking this had two separate um, sets of counting things and that you could actually like, um, and then I'd have eight, eight little LEDs flashing and then I'd have them flashing at different speeds. But I can't be bothered if I have to have two of these. Um, so <laughs> this will make it will make sense once we've made this. I mean, in this absolutely pointless video. But I do. I have had these other videos planned for such a long time to do, which are considerably more interesting than this one. Uh, but they all require, and this is the this is the the, the clincher for these things, a small amount of preparation. <laughs> So this this required like a small amount of preparation. Like I had to clear the desk and I had to get the books out and I had to find these things and I had to have a reason and an excuse for doing it. Uh, but everything else requires slightly more preparation and so I just don't get around to doing it. These are not the colors they want. Like, um, hold on, we've got this little box here which is like an older one uh, and has bigger, more of them. But this is like a traditional, like I feel like this one is like an antique. I don't even know how I got it. Um, but I kind of just want a small red one. Well, there's this red one. We could use this one. All right, so let's just first start off by putting on some power. And there isn't, there's actually quite a few not connected. There's three not connected um, pins on this thing. So I think this is not, like I'd have to, oh, I have to turn the whole thing around. And well, I do have, I'm not completely disorganized today. I do have this thing. If I turn this thing around, um, Oh, I've gone and squashed one of the... How did that happen? One of the legs is squashed. Well, we can we can repair it. It's probably one of the non-connected ones. Is it? It is not. In fact, it's like one of the most important pins. So we can't... Hold on. I want to make sure that the positive... The positive one is on this... Is going towards me. Okay, you real, I really I really do need to find my, my pin squashing device. Uh, before I go and break any more things. All right, so that's all in place. All the legs seem fine. Um, and I still can't use this one. So that was a waste of time. All right, well, we're just going to use this long brown one. <laughs> it's going to look terrible. So that can go there. And that can go there. All right, so now we've got the positive voltage. It doesn't actually go there. And I don't want it. Now Now that I've turned it around, I like. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want it to go this way because I'm reading it upside down. All right, that makes more sense to me. So let's just do this. <laughs> this is why I'm not making these videos. These videos are terrible. Like I watch other, I still watch other electronic channels and they're like, well, they, these things are much, much more sensible. They just get straight to the point and they don't do any fluffing around. Uh, there's these, what are these OSET ones? So one more look at, here's a picture of from the book. This is the TTL cookbook, by the way, by Dan, Don Lancaster. Uh, world famous. And like, that's not a joke really. I'm pretty sure he is. Like I saw somebody actually uh, on a Reddit post mention recently that they bought like a computer or something, uh, like one of those old kit set computer things uh, off Don Lancaster. Um, and that's like a true story. So <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm 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 still I'm still trying to get the copy of uh, that his t TV typewriter book. Um, I suppose I should actually try harder and look it up on eBay or something. 
Um, I mean, I've got actually at least two copies of this one and two copies of the CMOS one. Uh, and does he have? I don't know if I have any other ones of his. So anyway, that's that's that that's the end of that story. So let's just get some LEDs. And I'm I'm sorry to bore everybody tonight, but they're all going to be red. Um, which is not what I intend for the final version to have because I've already got a lot of red. I want the final one to be like different colors. Well, not, I don't want them to be different colors. I want them to be a different color to the color that they currently are. Uh, so that they might be yellow or something. I mean, I don't know what, like what computers count in these days. <laughs> What's the, well, he doesn't, like the person who's having this, this costume party, they're, they're having it and the theme is like, Rocky Horror Picture Show or Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but they're thinking about the movie. Um, and I'm like, I haven't actually seen the movie of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> I've seen segments of it and I have it on DVD. I just have never had the enthusiasm to actually watch it. Um, so, uh, where did I put them? Oh, that's why I've got confused. Uh, all right, well, we are going to use the wrong... So I was going to use my trusty pile of 470 ohm resistors, but we're going to use the 300 ones, which I don't feel are quite appropriate, but that's what we're going to do. Um, I wasn't even paying attention to which way around these guys. It's been a while since I've done this channel, so I'm really rusty, uh, and I'm not going to bother doing anything. I've been doing everything on here is 300, which I feel is inappropriate, except for the little tiny ones, uh, because I have a whole pile of boxes of resistors, and basically the 300 ones were the ones that I pulled a pile out, and that's what I'm going to use. That's how I do electronics, and I feel like, well, this thing only has to last, like, um, if there's too much current going through anything, like, I think I just in the end used, um, these are all going to be switched by um, the transistor down here which is of course a 2222 two, two, which I think will be fine I don't think there's that much current I haven't bothered to do the maths there's not there's not an amp going through each of these things um, but I'm sure they won't be that happy if they were left on for 24-7 um, but <laughs> like I really I mean I could have got away with these being like a thousand ohms and I think it wouldn't have made a lick of difference to how bright it was um, but that's life <laughs> so what are you gonna do um, Right, mm, okay, we're almost done the LEDs. This is not going to be much in this video, but that's good because it just has to be a quick video. I just almost thought for a second, am I actually recording anything? What if I hadn't been recording anything and I have been recording stuff? Uh, it says I have 16 minutes left on the camera, but I don't know that's just because I started uh, with insufficient space on my cam on my card or I actually have been talking nothing about nothing for so long. Um, and we're also going to use wildly inappropriate long wires. These ones here, look how long these are. These are ridiculously long, but that's all that we need. Uh, so on here, they're not in order. Well, of course they're not in order. Why would they be in order? So that's the one. I guess Q1 is going to be the ones digit, and this is Q2 is the twos digit. Fours, twos, ones, no. This is the twos digit. <laughs> Q1 will be the 2's digit, Q2 will be the 4's digit, Q4 will be the 8's digit, and, no, that doesn't make sense. Q1, no, that's the 1's, 2's, 4's, and 8's, right, fine. It's the actual number on the thing, so <laughs> there's nothing magical about that. Let's just choose the 4 best colours. Uh, I'm just going to choose those, alright. There are 4 there, alright. So, if I start here... The black one's going to go into that pin, and purple can go into that pin. It's quite, it's not terribly, you know, hold on. Q, purple is going to go into the other pin, and then the blue one's going to loop back. No, it's not. It's going to go to the end one. This is really wacky. What a wacky, this is the wackiest way they could have possibly um, ordered these pins. Okay. <laughs> so that's the order they went in. Gray purple, blue, green, <laughs> so if you're ever doing this, just remember that, uh, just make up a silly song to remember those colours, and then realise that those colours will have nothing to do with your project, and that was, that silly song was a waste of time. So now though, I should be able to go in the order that they are here, so 
one and 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 two. Like I do think there is a space. I mean, I am going to. I do have actual serious videos. One's going to be about PMP and NPM B uh, BJT tra uh, transistors, um, and just because it's one of those things when I first started. I was going to say, there is a space to have pointless videos where all you're doing is putting things in and doing a really, really basic circuit that has no actual point and just talking about it and not doing some sped up um, construction thing or some editing. Uh, you know, I just think there is. But the next one will be, at some point there will be a PMP and MPN transistor thing in a way that I can like I found that was when I first started looking learning about transistors just it was it was more difficult to understand PMP ones um, but now I find it considerably easier and I, hopefully I can portray the way that I now understand it and so that I can I'm imagining myself learning and how that I would so this is where things get a little bit tricky so there are two clocks and one of the clocks is going to feed back in, well, one of the things from here has got to feed back into the next clock, I think, to make the last one. So this is a a, 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 a two version thing, which doesn't quite make sense. But what am I looking for? I am looking, oh, I'm looking for that little plastic bag that I was just staring at, this thing here. So first off, we need our clock. Um, Am I going to finish this? This video is not actually going to get finished in time. I've only got 12 minutes left. <laughs> okay, well then we're going to have to speed this up. Um, where did I put the other ones? Where did you go? I know you're out there. Um, literally, I had set these things aside. Um, uh, uh, oh, these are some short ones. But, oh, here they are. Alright, so these ones here. Alright, take these guys out, and we are going to, I think that's actually, a, that's actually the best colouring that you can get for one of these things. Oh, 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 it's, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right, it's definitely um, a good, a uh, good thing to make videos where you just struggle with putting on these things onto pins for no reason. Um, people are going to say you really, really didn't really have to see that. But now I've got this coloured in just right. So green goes there, orange goes there, my signal goes. Um, I'm going to put that there for a second. Uh, I'm going to put it over here on this side. <laughs> so it's over here. Um, and we're going to use one of these slightly shorter ones to transmit my signal into the IC in a second, but we're also going to chuck in, um, you guessed it, another red LED, because I have to actually see if this thing flashes correctly. Um, and yet again, um, I feel like I could have a higher, a higher thing. I really should have had more. You know what I am going to use? I do have within arm's reach. My favorite, 5.6 kilo ohms with a little bit of sticky stuff on the end so they don't work so well. Just to help increase the resistance. So I don't want this LED to be very bright. I don't care. It's just got to tell me whether or not it's flashing. Okay, we need one more thing before we actually plug it in. And then we can investigate actually hooking up the clock and seeing what happens. I need to bridge this. Because this is one of those little breadboards that have two separate power bus bar thingies, whatever. All right, where's my battery gone? My battery is here. There is no reason why this battery could not have been plugged in since the beginning of this video. <laughs> I'm only just taking, wasting time. It is now plugged in. So we turn it on, and that's flashing super fast. Nothing much is happening here. So it is plugged in, I think, into the correct... Well, there's like a little bit of a flash. Um, I'm just going to double check. Um, that I've got everything in the right position because I'm a bit nervous now and I'm pretty sure I have I'm pretty sure okay so I'm gonna read this instruct okay wait it enter via clock one and jumper q1 to clock two well, okay so 
the most important one is clock number one. I'm turn this upside down. So clock there. So if I plug this into here, nothing happened. <laughs> well, that doesn't make sense. Why does nothing happen? Well, that's what it should look like. So why do the rest not work? Uh, oh, they are. Something's going. Something's gone wrong. This is this is icy. Not work. There's nothing not work. So this is where we've got some definite tension happening here. Um, what if I just put this straight there? That one works. That one works. I can't quite read. That one works. So the, I, the, the, the those work. Um, the clock goes into that pin. This is the output. Maybe this is because I'm using these funny HCT things. I'm just not understanding how these things are working. Um, this is definitely the right spots for those to go. I've done something silly, but what? That is the question. Um, that's the 5 volts going into there. This is so annoying, like I was expecting this thing. Okay, well we've got one option, we can try changing this over, I might have broken it. Um, because maybe I'm extra staticky tonight and I've finally gone and done it and broken what did I do with a little chip remover tool <laughs> easy come easy go that's what I was always told so uh, what is it like uh, what's loose here <laughs> something is loose well you know what I think maybe this maybe there's something wrong with this yeah I should not be trying to do that while it's going I'm just going to straighten that up. Now that can't be the problem because it like works sometimes. That looks like, that does kind of look like, hold on, there's two more There's two more pins on here uh, that I'm trying to not, so you've got O set and zero set. Oh, that's right. The counter, the clock must be properly conditioned, blah, 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 blah. Uh, both o, C, o set inputs must be grounded. Ah, there you go. Of course, it's that. This is this just shows you how long it's been since I've done this. We're going to use my favourite colour for grounding things, yellow. This is not true, but they look like they're the right size. Um, it's got two. Where's the other? I don't want another one. <laughs> it's my 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 failure is going to be trying to get the exact right colour. All right, and I've got to put that in the wrong place. All right. Okay, so, uh, turning this book around again. <laughs> oh, it's just getting worse. Stop doing it before I finish. It was supposed to be an exciting reveal. Um, bad, bad I see. So, all right. Oh, gosh, come on. Uh. All right, well, that's one in. And then the other one is going to go there. Is it going to just suddenly start working? I don't think. It was, it's working better than it was a second ago. But it's still not working the way it's supposed to. Uh, so what have we done? So those are not, that's not connected, that's not connected. That goes, has to be grounded, that has to be grounded. Why do these pins not do what they're supposed to? Um, maybe... Okay, for base 16 counted, so that's dividing that one by 2. Well, that makes sense. Uh, clock 1 must go to Q1. So, okay, we have to refeed this back into it, which makes absolute sense. Um, so I'm going to take the output from here, which is this one, and that's got to go into the second clock which is on the other side of the IC. So hopefully now everything will start working, and it does. So that's quite fun. Uh, I think it kind of has to go a little bit slower than this, because I really want, like if you're looking at that, like if you're just walking down the street and you see that, you're not going to go, hey man, that's binary. Um, so, <laughs> but these things are too hard to, I'm going to, that's why I want to like make, oh, I need a, I haven't got a silly screwdriver. That's okay. 
doesn't hold up. Everything is just breaking. I've got this screwdriver. Uh, can I actually get this thing to slow down? Um, I was actually going to, th I thought, well, I could feed this. That's going to make it go faster. I could feed this via a switch into the clock for... So it's really not slowing down a lot. Like, it's hard to get this thing to actually go like one I like I want I want to be able to go to one 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 flash per second or something so I, I give up <laughs> that's what I don't like about these things they just they just don't go low enough um yeah so for this thing here I could have a switch and I could actually clock it um, the 4817 off one of these inputs and then I had a little switch and that because like the two-way switch things and I could switch between either clocking it off, say, this, or clocking it off this one. But I think some here, somewhere it says in this thing, it doesn't make a very good clock. Um, no, the unusual... Okay, maybe it doesn't. Well, it's using itself as a clock, so obviously it has to be a reasonably good clock. Pin. It's like, it's, what I mean is that maybe the output from these things, because it's a ripple counter or something, doesn't isn't 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 quite conditioned enough to be used as a clock or something else but the problem is this is going to be a clock that's going to be coming off here at five volts and it's going to be going into a 4017 running at nine volts but then again there's actually no reason at all why the 4017 has to run at nine volts because i only need uh five volts at the output to run the the transistors so I could put the, that, so that will work out fine actually, and that, that way I can have a slow mode where I'm clocking it off the end one, or I can have a fast mode where I'm clocking it off this one, uh, with just a switch, none of these little nasty analog, um, you know, thingy watch it. So anyway, that was what I thought I'd do, so I am going to try and do a lot more videos. The other video I really want to do is on what's in this little bag here, um, though I don't know where I put the actual one that I made up. Um, so people are all on crazy about these things, which are like these Raspberry Pi Picos, which I've got a couple of and haven't got around to actually playing with. But I got one of these a while ago, um, which is a W600 Pico. <laughs> I don't know. I suddenly realized this is called Pico and it came up before this one. So it's obviously they've ripped the name off somehow. Uh, this is also a very similar kind of device, I think, to this. Um, but it has built-in Wi-Fi, and that's the main difference. This is more powerful in pretty much every single way, except this has built-in Wi-Fi. Uh, and this used to be really cheap, but now these are pretty cheap. Like I can buy these from my local shop for um, uh, a lot less than you can buy an Arduino for. for. So I think they're, not, they're onto a winner with these, if these actually work well. Um, but I wanted to do a little tutorial on how to get these things to work, because they're quite fun. And we're going to use it to... Um, control a little RC car thing that I've got that uses Wi-Fi but the app doesn't work on my um, on the app store anymore <laughs> so but there is information on the internet on how to uh, communicate with it so I thought well that would be a fun little project to make a little handheld controller uh, with one of these things so thanks for watching and I don't know when the next video will be but hopefully it won't be too far from now uh, and yes have a good night and, and that all and that all that kind of stuff bye